Hello, star people. This month's full moon is called the flower moon. And like all full moons, it has its own interesting characteristics. So stay tuned. And just a reminder that we're now here every weekday, just after noon central, or to be exact, 1715 UTC to present live and answer any questions you might have about astronomy in the night sky. So if you do have a question and you're watching live, just drop it in the comments field of whatever platform you're watching on. So the flower moon named for springtime and blooming plants. You know, uh, a lot of the full moon names we hear about are have this Northern hemisphere bias. So it's spring in the Northern hemisphere now, but of course it's autumn in the Southern hemisphere. So if you have a list of names uh, of the full moons in the Southern hemisphere, please let us know. We've been looking for that for years. <laughs> and the crest of this full moon for all of us on earth will fall at 1656 UTC on May the 12th. And that's 1156 AM Central Time that day for us in the Americas. And you probably know that the full moon isn't up in the daytime, it's only up at night. So the moon will appear full to us from the Americas on both the nights of 11th, uh, May 11th and May 12th. And by the way, we do sometimes see the moon in the daytime. So why not a full moon? Here's a daytime moon captured by an Earth Sky community member, Damien O'Sullivan in Ireland. And it's true, you can often spot the moon pale against a blue sky, but not a full moon. And that's because in order to appear full to us, you have to be looking at the moon's fully lighted half or day side. This photo shows a moon not quite full, probably within a day of full moon. And maybe you can see that it's on the opposite side of the sky from the sun. It's in a twilight sky, but it's in the east, whereas the sun went down in the west. Uh, so that's a characteristic of the full moon, every full moon. All full moons rise in the east around the time that the sun is setting in the west. And here's the view from space. See how the day side of the moon is facing the night side of Earth in this illustration? So both the day and night sides of the Earth and moon uh, are always facing the sun. And we only see a full moon at night. And we only see it when we see the fully illuminated day side of the moon. So we've got a great article at earthsky.org called Four Keys to Understanding Moon Phases. The link is in the post description. Okay, so this May full moon, here's something cool. Um, you'll be watching for the full moon on May 12th, and that May full moon will lie near the red star Antares, heart of the scorpion in the constellation Scorpius. We think of this star as a summer star, it's a sign that summer is coming. And here's the next night, May 13th, the moon will be even closer to Antares. From some parts of the world, the moon will cover Antares on this night. And one more cool thing, this May full moon is the third of three full micro moons in a row for 2025. And that means it'll be nearly at its farthest from Earth for this month on the same night that it's full. At its farthest this month, the moon will be 251,828 miles away. And notice from this illustration that a supermoon, <clears throat> excuse me, supermoon, or especially close full moon, is bigger on the sky's dome. And so a supermoon is some 30% brighter than a full micromoon, like the one we'll see this month. And that means that you might notice that the full moon on May the 12th isn't casting as much light in the sky or on the ground as some full moons. But I promised you some tips on observing the full moon and Earth Sky's John Goss has been waiting backstage. 
Hey, John. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Deborah. It's good being here. Yeah, John is a veteran moon observer. Uh, yes, I'd like to say a few things about viewing the full moon. The first thing you're going to notice when you view the full moon is it's round and it's bright. Even during this micro moon, it's still pretty, pretty bright. So you want to you want to try to eliminate some of that brightness. And in the past, I've talked about wearing sunglasses. But another way of doing this is seeing it right at sunset. And if you're in Oops. right, they're adjusted to more or less daytime brightness. So the moon that doesn't appear very bright at all. And you can see fairly easily. In fact, you can see markings on its surface. Um, we <laughs> Okay. John, you you pause a minute until you see yourself pop up, okay? All right. All right. So uh, we have the moon on the opposite side of the Earth as the sun, which means that when the sun sets, the, uh, the full moon rises. And so that's a good time to see it right when it's rising. Okay. Hang on a second. Let's go to this. Oh, great. Well, one thing you're going to notice when you do see the full moon is light and dark areas on, on its surface. Um, these It's pretty important uh, what these things mean because it points to the evolution of the moon, which we won't get into, but it shows how the moon was made. The light areas are really heavily cratered areas, which are very old. The dark areas uh, were formed later than that by large asteroids smacking to the surface, cracking the surface, and releasing uh, basaltic magma. So what you're seeing are basaltic planes on the moon, which is dark. Those are fairly flat, not very many craters. Um, as you can see over on the uh, right-hand side, there are several maria, which are the seas on the moon. These are not seas, they are flat planes of basaltic uh, lava. That's completely hard. We have uh, Mare Tranquillitatis, which is where Apollo 11 landed. And we have some other ones such as Mare Imbrium, but the, the, the big large one is the uh, uh, Procellanus, uh, Oceanus Procellarium, which is that large structure on the left-hand side of the moon. You can see that with the unaided eye as a dark region on the moon. Um, number of other things on the moon you can see, um, well, really with the unaided eye, we can focus in on Tycho, Crater Tycho. Oh, excellent picture. Excellent picture of, of the almost full moon. It's not, 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 not quite full. But on the lower side of the, of the moon, you can see a crater with these bright rays streaming out from it, up and down, left and right. That is the crater Tycho. It's not the largest crater on the moon, but it's probably the most easily visible. And when we talk about rays, uh, what we really are is talking about is uh, dust debris that was created when the uh, asteroid smacked into the moon excavating the surface, plowing out material, including this powdery material with these rays. Um, this is an, one of the younger craters on the moon. Um, and it's, as I just said, it's one of the largest, but not the largest. Here's just, a, we wanted to just point this out a little better. So Tycho, uh, what John is talking about, the arrow now is pointing to Tycho and you can see it right at the bottom of the moon in this image. And you can see those rays extending out that, that he's talking about. Right. The, the rays are even brighter than the uh, area around it, which we call the lunar highlands because they, it is a little bit higher than the dark Maria plains around it. But the rays are on top of that, and it's quite a bit brighter. So you can, you can make out these streamers coming out from the surface. You can see this binoculars really easily. Right. And so, John, when is the best time to look at the moon through binoculars? The problem with looking at the moon really anytime is, is that it's so bright. So, you know, when it's just rising, it's still a little bit on the dim side. You might, that might be a good time. But as it rises higher in the sky, it also gets a little bit crisp, crisper view. So, you know, I'd wait until a couple hours after sunset, uh, until a couple hours uh, before sunrise. Full moon, you can see all night. You don't have to uh, wait immediately right at sunset or do it right at sunrise. The whole night will give you a really good good time to see it. Okay, because um, I've always heard that the moon is better to observe in twilight. It, well, it would be. The, the, uh, it's 
the brightness difference between the moon and the sky isn't quite as great. So you'll be able to see it fairly well. Uh, but because it's so low on the horizon, it'll have a little bit more atmospheric distortion for, for its light to go through to get to your eyes. A trade-off. Okay, John, thank you for being oh, here. One more thing. Okay. In honor, in honor of the full oh. moon, we got our flower <laughs> moon right here. Really, wear flowers in your hair and put them in your pocket. Think of the full moon. <laughs> John, thank you. Just say all again. Much. Okay. Okay, so for today, that is our show. And remember that we're here every day around midday for the US or 1715 UTC, uh, if you'd like to translate that into your time zone. On Monday, we'll be speaking with Cassius Morrison, who is a paleontologist at the University College London. He'll be talking about T-Rex, which evolved in North America but whose direct ancestor appears to have come from Asia, crossing a land bridge that connected the continents more than 70 million years ago. We hope you'll join us then. One Earth, one sky, Earth sky. <laughs>